I wanted to talk to you about keeping goats. Now there are lots of different breeds of goat in the UK and they're wonderful creatures. If you want something that's a little bit bigger than a chicken, uh, but smaller than a cow and reasonably easy to keep, then sheep and goats are a good choice. So what I thought I'd do is just talk you through the process of goat farming. So what sort of goat do you want to get? What's it going to cost you? What sort of facilities do you need to keep goats? What about breeding them, selling them? And then what about using their products? So we'll go through that in stages. So on the farm park here, we sell bags of animal snacks, uh, which has got grass nuts in, and so that people can feed the animals as they walk around. That interaction is great. And with our goats, if they're not paying you any attention, if you rattle something that sounds like an animal snack bag, they'll generally come over. There's a gentleman over there. They think he's got more food than I have. <laughs> In here, we've got baggot goats, these lovely animals with a black neck and a white body. Both males and the females are horned. And these are an ancient rare breed of goat that were thought to have been bought back from the Crusades by Richard the Lionheart and gifted to Lady Baggot in Blithfield Hall. And then my dad got gifted some from Blithfield Hall back in the 70s, and we've had them ever since. And they're very much a parkland goat, quite an ornamental animal, quite lively as well. Then we've got the um, Golden Guernseys, as the name suggests, from the Channel Islands, that produce a beautiful, rich, creamy milk. And you can either get a little milking machine or you can milk them by hand and make your own butter and cream. And the Golden Guernsey, again, has horns with males and females, different shades of a ready, sort of ready ginger colour, gorgeous goats. And then the other breed of goat we've got here is the boar goat. They're uh, a breed from South Africa, Afrikaans for farmer, I believe. And they're a meat breed. So you can produce really good quality goat meat, which is absolutely delicious. And then there are various other breeds for milk production, for meat production, but also to be kept as pets. First of all, what do you need to keep goats? Well, goats do need some kind of shelter, so they don't have lanolin, grease in their wool like sheep do. They have hair, and they're not particularly waterproof. The baggot is actually quite a hardy breed, but some of the other breeds are less hardy. So a shelter like this, a simple wooden structure so they can get out of the rain, bed it down with some straw, and they can also use it for shade when it gets too hot as well. Goats love to clamber on things, so if you can build some kind of playground for them, uh, this is a sort of stony area that they jump up on top, it wears down their hooves, but they love to play. They're very inquisitive animals, goats, and they do like to browse. So sheep graze, so grazing the grass, but goats are grazers, but also browsers. So if you've got beautiful bushes and roses and a lovely garden, if you get them in the garden they'll eat the lot <laughs> so but if you've got rough areas on the farm with brambles and bushes and areas that you want eaten back actually goats do a very good job they can have hay they love roughage so we've got a hay rack there and so they're nibbling away at the hay that's grass that's cut during the summer months dried out and can be stored and you can either produce your own hay if you've got enough ground or buy it in and then over there we've got a water trough that gives them a fresh supply of clean water 24-7. When you're supplementary feeding them, you can feed them the equivalent of a sheep nut, which are little pellets, and the goats will get a portion of sheep nuts each every day. And what you need to do is look up how much they need, depending on where they are in their life cycle, depending on whether they're a young goat, an old goat, whether they're pregnant, whether they're producing milk for kids. So that's what you need if you're going to get one. And they are herd animals. So when I say get one, don't ever get one, get a herd. You need three really as a minimum because they're herd animals. They like company and then work out a suitable area on your small holding or your farm to keep them in. Some goats are very good at jumping, particularly the baggots can be quite lively. So slightly higher fences is a good idea so they don't break out and run away. But before you even 
go to buy goats, you need to get a holding number from De DEFRA, the Department of Agriculture. And trading standards need to be informed that you've registered as a holding that will be keeping goats and they will give you a specific holding number and then also a herd number for your goats. That's law, you have to have that before you can go and buy them. So if someone comes to me to buy a goat, I take the tag number of that animal, I put it onto a movement license and put their holding number on that movement license that goes with the goats and then a copy is sent to trading standards. If you move a goat without going through that process, you're breaking the law. So you have to have that first. Lots of people think, oh, I'll go and get some sheep or I'll go and buy some goats. But you need to get all that uh, paperwork done before you set off. So you've decided why you want them. You've got the right infrastructure, all the equipment to keep them. You've gone through all the paperwork and everything's in order. You've now got your goats on the farm. So how do you keep them fit and healthy? Nutrition, of course, is key, but then also, they get various internal and external parasites. So the external parasites they can get are ticks or lice that are small blood-sucking insects that you can treat for. You can get a, a, a pour-on chemical that goes down their backs that can treat them for lice and for ticks. And then the other thing they can get is intestinal worms. So various types of gut worm that you can get the right anthelmintics it's called, the drug to kill those worms in their stomachs. Kids, the young goats, are quite susceptible and it can seriously affect them, give them an upset tummy, so diarrhea, and potentially kill them. So it's really important you keep on top of the stomach worms. So if you decide to go into goat farming and you've got to go out and buy them, you need to work out how much you're going to spend. And it does vary depending on the age of the animal, the breed, some breeds are more expensive than others, the sex, whether you're buying males or females, and also whether they're pedigree and registered with the breed society. So if you're buying a top show male goat, you might be spending, you know, thousand pounds, maybe two thousand pounds. If you're buying an unregistered weather, castrated male kid, you might only pay 50 pounds and there's everything in between. So say you were going to get one of these golden Guernsey nannies from me, so she's a middle-aged nanny and I would charge you somewhere in the region of 250 to 300 pounds. But she will then give birth to twins every year for the next four or five years and so you can get your money back almost in one year if you can then go and sell two two female goats to someone else. But don't forget to take all your costs out, all the feed, hay, your time, putting up the infrastructure. So as a hobby, can they be profitable? Just about. If you've got hundreds of them and you're building quite a big business, then yes, they can. The last thing to mention is breeding goats. So a male is a billy and a female is a nanny and the babies are kids. And of course, you need a billy and a nanny before you can get the kids. And one billy will mate will 20 or 30 nannies. And you need to go to a reputable breeder to buy the billy. If you're keeping registered animals, make sure it's fully registered with the breed society of that breed. And then you put the billy in with the nannies five months before you want the kids. And like sheep, goats are seasonal animals. So they come into season ready to ovulate and accept the billy in the autumn months. And then five months later in the spring, when the grass starts to grow, they'll give birth. And so we choose to put our billies in around November, and then the kids are born in April when the weather starts to warm up. Of course, if you're going to milk your goats, as they're mammals, they will only produce milk if they've given birth to a kid. And goats will have one, two, or sometimes three kids. And once the nanny has given birth, if you're going to milk them, you then need to separate the kids away from the nannies for a suitable amount of time for her udder to fill out so that you can then take some milk for your own use. In a commercial goat system, what they'll do is take the kids away at a day or so old, rear them on artificial milk, and then the nannies will produce plenty of milk for the farmer to keep. And so that's it for keeping goats. I think they're wonderful creatures. And I've got the baggots here as the rare breed, the Parkland animal. The other rare breed we've got is the Golden Guernsey. He's famous for their beautiful milk. 
the boar goats that we have for producing meat. And then I have got a few pets as well. Pebbles, my spotted Anglo-Nubian. She's beautiful.